Hi there, my name is Andres and today I want to talk about how games have changed over the years and how more and more popular has become the opinion that games are becoming more and more simpler and more dumped down. Now the reason I'm talking about this is because I watched on YouTube Total Biscuit Smellback video where he answers a viewer's question about this same topic. Uh, link in the description to this video. His viewer asks him about this dumbing down and I won't repeat what he said but basically his uh, tone was negative and he noticed this trend. But in my opinion what a lot of people forget is that video games is first and foremost a business and you cannot get away from that. And each business wants to grow, each business wants to conquer new markets and as video games become more and more popular and it attracts bigger and bigger audiences games have to change and a long time that means games have to become simpler to understand and if in that means making some game mechanics so called dumped down then video game companies will do that they're willing to make that risk and maybe alienate some of its loyal fan base in exchange for a bigger audience. And then you have to take in fact that video games are more and more expensive to make. Uh, top of it here, video game these days can take tens and tens of millions of dollars to develop alone, not to speak of the marketing budget video game publishers spend to promote their games. A good example of that I think is BioWare's Dragon Age series. Like Dragon Age 1, although a multi-platform title, was basically a PC game because it was this hardcore western RPG that reminded a lot of players of uh, RPGs of the old days like Baldur's Gate. Now, take Dragon Age 2. It was a lot more simpler and less complicated. One kind might say that it was a more of a console experience. Now, why is that? Well, it's that way because Dragon Age 1 sold more copies on Xbox 360 than on any other platform. Console gamers bought that game more than the devoted PC gamers. And that's the sad truth. So, it's not surprising that Bioware went and made the sequel that appeals more to the console audience. Mind you, I didn't like the changes that they did to Dragon Age 1, but the sad truth of the market is that there are a lot less people like me than they are the traditional console games. This is the same reason why you see games that really don't need sequels having a sequel, like Bioshock. Like Bioshock 1 was a tremendous experience and I really, really liked it. It had a very great world and it had a great story in it, but by the end of that game it didn't really want more of it, it was very self-contained but you still had Bioshock 2 just because Bioshock 1 was so successful and made such a good name it is viable to make it into a franchise and Take 2 did that they gave the Bioshock name to another developer who produced a sequel which was fine but still worse than the first and at the end of the day that's how all decisions are made all the risks that people take and ev everything that they make is to go of actually making money that's how modern world works that's how people work and then you can think a bit psychologically like why games like mech simulators or space simulators are practically dead or why adventure games had go big changes in way how they're developed and presented to player layer to be still viable it's only because the market has changed like take Call of Duty the main action is Call of Duty is shooting and people can understand shooting because it's very simple to understand you push a button, bullet comes out, it hits an enemy, that enemy goes down, that's it. Now, what are some game mechanics that are involved, like can make combat games? Say, for instance, heat management. Like, th those two words alone together sound complicated. 
they're enough to output a mainstream audience. And it doesn't matter that all that basically means is that you have to shoot carefully and step into water from time to time. It just sounds complicated enough. It sounds more complicated than shooting. Now, when you try to appeal to a mass audience, the simpler you, you can get, the better, because more people can understand it. So, at the end of the day, you have heat management and you have shooting. Well, it's a, this is a lot heavier to understand. So, of course, the main audience will go for the lighter thing. That's why Call of Duty is so successful, because it takes this basic concept of shooting, perfects it in a lot of ways, and that's why Activision gets away with making the same game year and year and year after. This is the same reason why games like Call of Duty are so tightly scripted, because game developers make them more of a roller coaster than anything else. They make them more of a flash experience than a challenging game, per se. And if making a building go down means putting an invisible layer and a very tight pad in the game, then game developers will go those routes and make those invisible walls and make it all tightly scripted. Because the main audience wants to be thrilled. Of course, uh, there are game reviews and there are message boards and forums and people express their negative opinion uh, there. But general audiences don't visit GameSpot or IG and not to speak of less familiar sites like Giant Bomb. And that's why big gaming publishers like Activision make the similar games year and year after. Look at Tony Hawk, look at Guitar Hero, and look at Call of Duty. My Guitar Hero didn't change that much one year to another. And when it didn't make any profit, they forgot about it. The same way they did with Tony Hawk before that. Like still, those franchises exist, and Tony Hawk has big differences made to it every year. But their main focus is now on Call of Duty, and it's a very, very sad game experience. They exploit our need for familiarity. That's why when you buy a Call of Duty, you can be pretty sure that you exactly know what you're buying, and how the multiplayer will work, and how the campaign will be structured. And maybe you or me don't like these things, but still, that's how the market works. And until Call of Duty fails, Activision won't change it. And you will have Call of Duty clones until Call of Duty won't be any more successful. So, in the end, it all comes down to what I started this video with. It's a business, and you have to take it as a business. I love games. I love playing them. I love experiencing them. I love gathering information about them and reading watching or listening to different opinions about them. But there are far less people like me than there are people who don't read reviews or watch videos like this. So if you have any opinions on this topic and if you have anything to add or even object to what I said, then feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. But that's it for me this time and I hope you'll have a nice day. So, bye!